All right, welcome back to Artifact Cup 30. This is the last game in round two on the Boneyard. If you haven't heard me saying it the last nine times that I've cast these videos, Artifact Cup 30 was a round robin tournament. There are nine rounds for 11 players and every pair of players gets a match of just one game. The map is predetermined for you based on what round you're in. And in this game, I am playing against Lorenzo. So this is Lorenzo here in the Coalition Carrier. We are on the Boneyard. That was terrible for you. Here's the Boneyard. In all of its lumpy and building infested glory. And here is me in my Coalition Carrier. So let's check out what we're doing. I've mentioned before that you can read what people are doing based on their salvages, so I don't actually remember how I played this game. So let's see if I predict this right. I started on Aryus here. You can kind of tell because those salvagers came from one direction while other salvagers came from a different direction. So Aryus and CUs is a mix on this first resource point. Meanwhile, Lorenzo started on CUs because these Aryus salvagers came from the other direction. So let's see what we're doing. Uh, my guess here is Lorenzo is going to be starting, man, obviously I'm seeing it there, but starting out with something relatively CU heavy like LAV Fab and possibly support cruiser. Looks like it's LAV Fab here for Lorenzo, and my guess looking at me, because it is a RU heavy opening and I am a Gaussian player, that almost certainly means railgun tech. So I've got Sandskimmer Fab coming out, we're going to see if I go railguns. Here's my production cruiser. Uh, I have deployed a couple salvagers over here to get some CUs, but that doesn't really mean much, honestly. Lorenzo's done the same thing. We're just getting a few extra resources before deploying a collector there, like a production cruiser or a support cruiser. It does help because even though these are remote mining and taking forever to haul the resources back, at least it's something. And you might as well build them before the support cruiser or something like that. Salvager online. So, also of note, uh, I did retire my production. Oh my gosh, seriously. You're killing me, Majir. I, I apparently went to Salt Ship Fabrication, so I don't know what I was doing. I didn't even get, like, an RU Heavy Tech, so I... <laughs> apparently, at this point in the game, I had not decided what I was doing when I did it. So, this is really embarrassing, guys. I should know what my own plays are, but apparently I do not. Anyway, here is my production cruiser. Here are Lorenzo's LAVs. I really don't remember what happened in this game, apparently. I've got some scan skimmers coming out here, right? But the Gaussian produce very slowly, so while I'm trying to produce these sand skimmers and trying to use them to fight off Lorenzo's LAVs here, I'm keeping them at range so that they're not uh, super exposed to these LAVs. But Lorenzo's LAVs are really focusing on my production cruiser. I'm moving these up to get the high ground. Lorenzo is just staying right around the production cruiser trying to do as much damage as he can. He's going for that kill. And uh, I have assault ships coming out because apparently I did not go railgun tech. I went assault ship tech after an RU resource opening. I don't know why. I don't remember. I'm not going to be able to tell you. But these two sand skimmers are doing a very poor job. I mean, they're doing the best they can, but it's really hard to clean up these LAVs. And this assault ship comes out to try and clean them up by just barely this one little LAV with barely any hit points on it destroys my production cruiser. No reinforcements here from uh, Lorenzo yet. That scout's going to be sitting back there, and this assault ship is going to be moving forward with its two sand skimmer escorts without a production cruiser. And now and I'm left building another one. I'm well, still building an assault ship here. Support Wait, no, I'm not. That's a bug. I'm not building an assault ship because I don't have a production cruiser. But I'm building a new production cruiser because that's what I have to do. I am a Gaussian player. Without a production cruiser, I am completely helpless unless I had carrier power, which I don't. Facilities upgraded. So, that's a real bummer. Carrier Meanwhile, Lorenzo's Hostile got a support cruiser, he's got a nice economy going on, he's got a base support runner here and he's coalition, it looks like he's deploying a turret, and uh, this is like pretty bad here for Majir. But, my assault ship's gonna go in, this turret's gonna come up for Lorenzo, and I think I'm gonna just be able to move my assault ship out of range of that turret. Meanwhile, Check this out. There's an AAV coming out here, actually two AAVs here for Lorenzo, but my assault ship is damaging these resources and assault ships have AOE damage, area of effect damage. Lorenzo's gonna use great smoke there to protect his salvagers against my assault ship and I'm not gonna end up taking those out. But it was kind of close. I don't know. 
Hostile strike craft down. It was a good save by Lorenzo, and he's got repair beams, so actually everything I did there was completely pointless. But, as you can see, these bunched-up salvagers can be very vulnerable to assault ships with AoE damage, or to aircraft with AoE damage, as we saw in the previous game that I cast. I won't really say much more. Spoilers, I guess. But, suffice to say, anything, when you've got units bunched up like this, uh, area of effect damage does a whole lot. So, behind all this, I did capture an artifact, and I believe I captured, like, this one, maybe it was, uh, this one, obviously. Duh, that's the one with the timer, my dear. I captured this artifact and ferried it back into my extraction zone. That does prevent Lorenzo from grabbing his near artifact, he's kind of forced to take the middle one. But I then went and very quickly went back to my artifact to ferry it back. So Lorenzo's gonna get the middle pickings, but is, uh... You know, gonna be potentially facing a Gaussian carrier with a lot more carrier power. Let's check out the tech. I've got interceptor fabrication coming. That's not really a big surprise, given that I went to Salt Ship Fab. Uh, it makes a whole lot of sense to follow up assault ships with interceptors. The reason for that, by the way, is uh, that interceptor tech for Gaussian requires assault ship fabrication. And assault ships are very CU heavy, so you want to have something to do with your RUs. So let's check out Lorenzo. He's got railgun tech, he's got AV tech, and he's mostly just building AVs. Uh, this is getting, this is about as many AVs as I would say is reasonable to build at this point in the game. But we're going to see what else he builds. So he's got some LAVs coming in here, not a super lethal quantity, but definitely enough to do something. Meanwhile, economies, uh... Lorenzo's on two bases, I'm going out to three, and I've got two production cruisers back here, so... There's some stuff being done, I've got interceptors in the pipe. All things considered, uh, I'm not exactly prepared for this LEV. That's a lie, I have assault ships here, and I've got a carrier here, so yeah, I'm totally prepared for this LEV incursion. Uh, Lorenzo, however, he's very prepared with these assault ships, he's just... Or, excuse me, armored assault vehicles. He's just not using them in a very effective way. Uh, he's escorting this base runner, so this base runner, in fact, will not die to any of my sand skimmers. As you can see, I have one. These assault... Eh, excuse me. These armored assault vehicles would be much better used running around back here, or running in here, and destroying my economy. Uh, the assault ships could probably do a number on them, especially if they bunched up, but you know what? Uh, there's just... There's a lot more that AAVs can do before the assault ships would take them out, and I don't have things like railguns. I've just got a few interceptors here. So instead, Lorenzo is going to send his six LAVs, which don't have any upgrades in, and they're going to do a little bit of damage, destroying scanners and single sand skimmers and the like. But really, there's no real damage that's going to be done here, because they can't get anywhere near these assault ships, which are guarding the resources. These four AAVs, however, would have done absolutely horrendous damage to this resourcing pocket, potentially even destroying yet another production cruiser. So not capitalizing on that is really, I think, a mistake. You can see the AoE damage being done there by the assault ship, and also uh, plenty of damage being done by the carrier, which has a reasonable amount of carrier power. Power reserve 1 and 2 artifacts. These AVs, if they had run this way through, uh, could could probably do a, a drive-by of the carrier and actually take out quite a few of those salvagers, but they're going to run away, which is going to give me plenty of time to figure out what I'm going to do about that. And what I'm going to do about that is bring forward more on assault vehicles, uh, flirt around with my base runner, and then just otherwise kind of sit happy in mine back at home. Maybe build some more interceptors. These are really powerful units. Underway. They're not upgraded, but to move. Mm, the upgrade's cheap. These are very the powerful units, dead. especially against these unarmored resource targets, and the thing an AAV armor can do is it can just drive in and not care about what's shooting it. It's an armored Green assault armor vehicle. Assault it's not a scout around and smoke and run away from uh, assault ship Copy. vehicle. Now. So, Systems online. AAVs, you know, used in armor this capacity way. are useful. This screens off 
strike craft with their army, kind of provides an armored scout. But really, instead of turning around, this unit needed to just keep going because by the time these railguns got up on the dune, they'd be able to take care of that assault ship that's over here. So here's my strike fighters coming out. I don't have to care about the AVs because they're nowhere near me. If they'd been in my face, I'd probably have to prioritize them. But instead, I get to use my interceptors on these stationary and uh, much more squishy, vulnerable railguns. So I'm going to get a lot more damage done there. Meanwhile, my assault ship's going down to some of these railguns. Almost, actually. <laughs> the railguns are retreating just in time to give me uh, the chance to repair. Well, the base runner pops back over the hill, so some railgun losses taken here by Lorenzo and also more over here. Meanwhile, AEV is really going down. This is a nice move by Lorenzo. He's going to place an anti-air turret, which is going to be sort of a pain in my butt, but only until I destroy that turret. So I think the story of this game so far is really that Lorenzo had a, a tremendous advantage early by taking out that production cruiser, and I really misplayed by keeping that production cruiser around and by not building another sand skimmer in time to help fend off the LAVs because it was such a close fight there. But after that, Lorenzo didn't really capitalize on that. And so here I'm going to be able to take care of this anti-air turret. It's not really backed up by anything. There's AVs back here that are just not invading my resources. Not really doing much, and now Lorenzo's streaming in a ton of LAVs, which we'll see what he does with them. I'm glad that he decided to consolidate them rather than streaming them in one at a time. It's very easy to kill LAVs that are streamed out one at a time. But the thing is, this gave me time to build three production cruisers, and now I have a free Galcian carrier that has some carrier power. And I've got railgun tech, I've got interceptors, I've got assault ships. I'm in a much stronger position than I was when I lost that production cruiser. And it just took a whole lot of time of me sitting back and happily mining and not really having anything wrong happen to my economy. Push Meanwhile, any point. fights that happen were very much on my terms. I got to deploy my aircraft without anti-air cover getting in my way. And uh, when AEVs came in here, they just didn't really invade my economy, didn't do any damage. So in this case, Lorenzo really could have afforded to be much more aggressive. He's sending strike craft here against um, you know, assault ships. He knows I have assault ships. It was the first unit I got. And he's going to send LAVs in. This is really a waste of these units. Uh, and as he's coming in, he's going to attack the production cruiser. He's going to do enough damage to this production cruiser to have taken out a salvager, possibly two. But the production cruiser is just going to repair, so this attack will have accomplished absolutely nothing. Uh, and I, I don't say that to be mean. I really say that to kind of point out, you know, look, this is a... Uh, almost 2,000 damage that was done here. That's easily enough to take out two salvages and then do damage to more and to maybe take out one of these hand skimmers. So, here's a fight. This is an important fight. But I, I just, the reason I say it is because there's an opportunity here for Lorenzo to change his playstyle and improve, and I just don't want to uh, miss that. At the same time, I, I'm, I'm not trying to be rude and, and gloat about a victory in some kind of battle, but... Uh, oh, okay. So... Lorenzo just got an awesome missile hit on there on my railguns. I think at the time I didn't see this uh, assault cruiser either, but Lorenzo has an assault cruiser. He's using assault cruiser anti-air to take out my interceptors. Not sure if it actually took any out yet, but it's at least firing at them. Use an assault cruiser to clean up one of my assault ships, and then uh, you know I've got interceptors here taking care of some railguns, some uh, armored assault vehicles here. But the AA from that assault cruiser is doing a great job, and I really misplayed this by continuing to attack the AAVs, and I really should have been attacking these railguns, which were really clustered up. So I very much misplayed that air battle there. That whole battle I just totally misplayed, and Lorenzo now has an opportunity to come back, which is great for him. He's pretty covered, by the way. He's got this turret posting here, he's got a carrier here, so, you know, there's, there are a few angles where I can attack him. He doesn't have anti-air... Uh, on the support cruiser, so he's maybe vulnerable in the air. But you know what? He took out a lot of my aircraft over here. Good for him. So he's kind of back in this game. He's got assault cruisers, and assault cruisers... I'm very skeptical of them lately, but you know what? We'll see if he can use them. For the fact, he's hiding them in these dunes, which is very useful, because he can duck behind and just engage at short range. It would be very dangerous if he continues this movement path, though. He needs to really keep away from these railguns. So these railguns here, my assault railguns, are going to go down both to the assault cruiser and to some crossfire from railguns from over here. There's kind of a missed missile barrage here, and the assault cruiser will go down to the railguns and to the assault ships. 
Meanwhile, a lot of railgun fire is going to drive off my Galcian carrier. But at the same time, these AVs are going to go down to crossfire from Galcian heavy railguns. And what that's going to do is it's going to mean that I have kind of free range to just go in and do whatever I want to these railguns with my other units. As long as these two assault cruisers don't catch up. There's just a lot of losses being taken on both sides. Uh, my assault ships here are going down to the railguns. My interceptors are going down to the assault cruisers. These railguns are going down to interceptors. Uh, the AVs here all went down to the carrier and to some of my railguns. My railguns went down to some AVs. Here's a siege cruiser that I've got, so that's real neat. That's going to do a whole lot of damage to these railguns, especially over time as that passive firing occurs. And these two assault ships really don't have that much time. They need to get in and do critical damage to that siege cruiser. Uh, this siege cruiser is going to desperately try and run away from the assault cruisers and from these railguns. It's going to go down. There's another one coming in on the queue, so I'm not super, super worried. And there are also heavy railguns here up on the dunes. And this is pretty dangerous for these assault cruisers. They need to get back here or they might die. Uh, it's going to be very difficult against all these railguns. Four heavy railguns to do anything about that. I'd say either they need to move very far forward or very far back. Meanwhile, I am running a whole bunch of sand skimmers right into AAV, so that's a terrible idea. Here, the assault cruisers going down. The railguns probably about to go down. These heavy railguns doing great damage. Hostile carrier visually authenticated. Artifact position locked in. New heading. Secure it. New heading set. There's so much going on here. I'm going to try and... Uh, oh, here's Lorenzo's artillery cruiser. I'm going to try and do a little bit of show, not tell. Making sure I catch all of the action. But I do just want to point out we've got artillery on both sides. Meaning neither side can really get entrenched for too long. Assault, cruiser on approach Assault cruisers really only work if they're in the enemy's face. And this one is retreating, meaning it's incredibly vulnerable. And the other one that was up here got basically nothing done. Green light to proceed. Move. Base runner assembled. So, these railguns here, in a good position to fire from, but, uh, it's gonna be pretty dangerous when there's siege on the field. And I've got artillery, uh, excuse me, I've got railguns over here, but they're assault railguns, they're fast moving, they're mobile, and I'm not too worried about this artillery cruiser as a result. These sand skimmers are very vulnerable to this assault cruiser, which is why I'm kind of moving around the edges here, just looking for an opening trying to dislodge these units. Meanwhile, though, take a look at this. Tons of AAVs here, just tangling with a coalition carrier. And they might finally try and attack into the resource pocket here, but they're going to go down to tons of AOE damage from those Gaussian interceptors. Meanwhile, let's take a look here. Um, you didn't see it, but these assault railguns found an opening where the artillery cruiser was vulnerable and took that out. This assault cruiser is going to miss. These railguns are all going to go down. His railguns, I should say. These AAVs went down, uh, at least most of them, to uh, a whole lot of AOE damage from the interceptors and also to some uh, pretty significant carrier firepower there. I said these were all going to go down, and I guess they weren't. I don't know. The artillery cruiser came back. I misremembered this game. Whatever. Lorenzo grabs an artifact. That's pretty good. He's at three out of five artifacts. That's, that's very good for him. I've got a siege cruiser up here. Uh, there's just so much going on on both sides. Um, I've got sand skimmers over here. I guess they didn't really get much done here. There's an assault cruiser here guarding. And assault cruisers are very good against sand skimmers. There are more railguns here from Lorenzo. This AAV is still alive, almost destroying my production cruiser, so I finally sent this guy over here to deal with it. It'd be really annoying if he had got his assault cruiser back there or another artillery cruiser or something and done something about that. Anyway, he's going to be up at four artifacts unless I do something about it with these. Or interceptors. Let's see. These are coming out. I've got a whole bunch of heavy railguns. Well, four of them anyway. And some uh, assault railguns there. Ready to do some damage. This might get taken out. And I've got sand skimmers. Now, sand skimmers are going to run into this assault cruiser, and that's going to be really bad for the sand skimmers. The assault cruiser is going to run into the siege cruiser, and that's going to be really bad for the assault cruiser. It's also railguns. That's going to be really bad for the assault cruiser. So, that dies. The sand skimmers are going to try and hide behind the rock. That's going to work for a little bit. Meanwhile, though, these units aren't doing anything. I mean, they were. They were... They were sitting there, and now they're moving. But, like... This is here, and this was really vulnerable to a bunch of railgun fire. Um, and these are just sitting ducks to the artillery. I think these need to be very, very mobile. But instead, because they were caught out, because these assault railguns are able to get close, this assault cruiser is going to go down real fast. 
It's gonna try and barrage, but the assault cruisers, excuse me, the assault railguns are gonna sidestep. The siege cruisers are gonna take the brunt of that fire. And there's gonna be more artillery. These siege cruisers are gonna be able to pull back near this dune for safety. Barrage down these AAVs. It's gonna be a, uh, an artifact pickup here from Lorenzo, but he's so distracted by the fight, he's not going to be able to get it back. Meanwhile, there's an artifact capture here, an artifact capture here. Lorenzo is quickly running out of victory options, and I've just about secured an artifact victory myself. Meanwhile, I've got two siege cruisers. Now he's got an assault cruiser and he's got railguns, but these railguns are just too close to the assault railguns here. And I'm guessing this is kind of the end. Lorenzo's got carrier power. He's got so much carrier power. My goodness. I didn't realize this, but I think he might have more carrier power than I do. Because I've got... We've basically got equal carrier power right now. And I'm using my carrier offensively and using a lot of power and speed. And he's got a coalition carrier and he's not using it. He, uh... Wow. So we're going to watch this. But what's probably going to happen here is this is going to go in, and this is all just going to fall apart. Lorenzo has so much, he's got 13 carrier power. Um, uh, 16 carrier power. Lorenzo has, no, 17 carrier power. Lorenzo has 17 carrier power. Uh, and completely forgot about it. Can you imagine what 17 carry power would do to this bunched group of uh, assault uh, guns right now? A, a heck of a lot of damage. And he just realized it now, but it's a little too late. These are going to take a long time to charge up. By the time he gets it charged up, I'm not sure he's going to be able to do anything. He also doesn't have any power in range. And it's worth noting that carrier power, when you have all the guns, you want to have some power in range so that you can apply the damage that you've worked so hard to get. He's doing a lot of damage to my carrier, so uh, good on him for, for getting some uh, some power there. He really needs one that to put that one power in range and and start killing these railguns. If he was able to kill those railguns, which he could totally do with all that carrier power, I had no idea he had that much. Um, then he could have actually possibly won this game at this point. I think choosing to not go after the railguns is a big mistake. These were distracted with handling resources for a while. And look at the damage done here. If all that damage had been applied on these railguns, Lorenzo surely would have won that battle, I think. Or at least would have pushed me away. But as it was, close game, much closer than I thought it was when I was playing it. And uh, my assessment of this game is, you know what, maybe I still would have won uh, had Lorenzo acted a little differently with his carrier there. Because there is an artifact here, and uh, I do have the ability to speed away very quickly and regenerate with this Galician carrier. And I did have quite a, a large number of, of units here. But I will say, I think Lorenzo was in a much better position for most of the game than he allowed himself to use. Uh, he really failed to capitalize on the production cruiser kill over here, which is a huge deal. Killing a Galician player's production cruiser early in the game, that's, that, that's usually an automatic victory. Um... Failing to capitalize on the carrier power here, also failing to capitalize on, on some of the fights over here. There were many situations in which it looked like Lorenzo just didn't notice that something was going on or was too busy dealing with some fight somewhere to be able to uh, keep control of the whole game. So for that, I certainly recommend playing in this view because even though you miss some of the little details like artillery fire going off, uh, you won't get caught by a lot of those other issues. You can very quickly see what's going on at a glance and understand on a broad scale what's going on. So you're not just thinking about what's happening in this little area of the map positioning wise, but where are the units positioning all around? In any case, good game, Lorenzo. Uh, I'm sorry that you had all that carrier power and didn't use it until the end. It was a valiant attempt uh, and I would love to play again another time. To all the viewers, thank you for watching. This concludes round two of Artifact Cup 30, and there are seven more rounds on, seven more maps with these 11 players in Artifact Cup 30. So stay tuned for more.